Welcome into the MoCast podcast, baby. Episode Meh. 62. Great to be here. Ready to roll. Ready to roll, boys and girls. Huge, huge episode because we have a big announcement that we are going to get into in just a minute after we get this uh, get through this intro. But as always... I am one of your co-hosts, L.A. Rice. I'm a two-time state champion, Legion baseball player, Roll Vienna 180, baby. And I'm a house basketball all-star and a house basketball champion. And I thought I freed a horse. I thought I freed the spirit. Remember that? We almost added that to our bio. We are fully behind all the horses. We gave the explanation in a prior episode But uh, Medina Spirit's now guilty. Did you see that? No. Well, they might say she's guilty, but is she really? Exactly. What's what's the news? Fill me in. Well, supposedly it was like the Ryan Braun thing. They said there was like a tainted test or something. And then um, now they're saying the test is confirmed and they banned the train. Oh, I know. It's ridiculous. That's suspicious. That's suspicious. Here's what I want, though. I just want. I don't want Medina spirit thrown under the bus. Okay. If there's going to be like, there should be some accountability. Otherwise, you know what I mean? It's not like Medina spirits walking into the, the drug store and getting these steroids or something. That's not happening. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. We are fully behind. We need to make a horses union. I'm serious. It's ridiculous. There needs to be a horses Alliance horses union, and we will be fully behind that with all of our advertisement money that we, that we receive, we will mm-hmm. set up. A horses tons Indian horses alliance tons um but i am uh i'm cb chris blake i started putting cb on the note sheet so that's a big change um things are changing i used to put chris uh but i'm a one-time virginia state champion shout out legion post 180 hopefully uh some big stuff coming there preview announcement at some point yeah. um 253 in bowling and um we went bowling yeah yeah uh, I hate to say this, Chris, but did you get a 253 in bowling on Wii Sports Bowling? That's a fair question because I don't no. know about the real life bowling. Was no, life? I have their seats. I have witnesses. Okay. I have their seats. But I mean, you know, we, we did bowl and I think you saw that. Uh, I mean, we're, we're both legit. It, it was a close competition. That's all. That's all I'm going to say. Shout out Patrick Kenny. Also went bowling um, and we had a, uh, a very competitive time. That's all I'm going to say because yeah. I'm a gentleman. Yeah. Yeah, that's all we're going to say. I, I didn't have any bowling balls that fit my fingers. They gave me oh. an old pair of shoes to start out. You mm. saw that I still won the first game, even with the old pair of shoes. I even had a ball get stuck on my thumb. I had a torn up thumb. I worked out earlier in the day, but no excuses. Mm. Uh, Chris Blake won the first series, but but we'll we'll see later. We'll see later when we get more into it. But it is now Monday, June 7th. It is 12.56. AM it's 56 and 59 seconds. So now it is 12 57 AM. As always, we are presented by good griefs. Check out the good griefs.com articles, good griefs, picks, check out all of that and follow us on social media. Follow the MoCast on social media at MoCast pod on Twitter and Instagram. Always posting stuff there. Check out the episode from last week. If you haven't yet, we had our boy Steve Peralt on and our dreams kind of came true. Don Orsillo tweeted. About oh, my that was God. Cool. Yeah. Oh, that my was, God. That was pretty darn cool. Pretty darn cool. Um, shout out, Don. Shout that, out, Don. That was, that's, that's one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me, I think, in my life. Yeah. So shout out, Don. Shout out, Don. Uh, we're going to kick off this episode, episode 62, with our Monday Minute uh it's going to be interesting what we talk about with our monday minutes talking about the socks talking about the nats then we're going to get into our who's hot and who's not of the week like every single week and our shout out of the week then we're going to talk about the grom he's been on fire and uh we got to get into the season he's having because it's unbelievable and we're going to talk about the mlb supposedly there's some rumors something's going to come out with the sticky stuff, some pine tar, Josh Taylor's throwing 97, who knows how. 
So we're going to get into that as well. And then some NFL. Obviously, when it's NFL season, we talk about NFL nonstop. But it's the off season, and something big just happened. We're going to talk about Julio Jones to the Tennessee Titans, baby. You're going to want to hear what I have to say about my Titans. Maybe my not. Titans. Maybe not. Probably my not. Titans. Kim then probably skipped that. Then we're going to wrap it up. Last but not least with JMU softball. We got to talk about it. I've been tweeting about it. And like I said, we're wrapping it up with JMU softball. So if you're wondering what's up with Mo Money, what's up with the top fives, you will learn about it right after you hear the music. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought that was pretty good. So <laughs> that was good. MoCast episode 62. Let's get to it. All right, welcome to MoCast episode 62, Sasente Do 62, 62. Big announcement, like you said, huge announcement. Um, so here's what we're doing, okay? Here's what we're doing. We are, we're going to split off Mo Money. We're going to, we're going to chop it off. We're going to chop it and move it. So we're going to do Mo Money standalone. We'll record it Thursday nights, um, and then we'll put it out on Friday. Or we'll put it out Thursday night after the episode, but we'll probably record it late like we do these. So it'll be out, you know, 1 a.m., something like that. It'll be out as soon as it's as soon as possible. So you can listen to it on Friday. OK, it's going to be like 30 minutes like we usually do the segment. It's going to be like 30 minutes. And that way, if you want to just hear the bets, you can just hear the bets. OK. If you want to just hear our part, the, the part we do and put out on Mondays, you can just listen to that. Obviously, we hope you listen to both because we love both. We put a ton of effort into both. But this way, this way, we can kind of emphasize the betting part of it, put that on its own, get it out earlier so you can see our incredible picks. And we're also going to put the top five with that so we can keep doing that with our boy E. Noon. So that's the plan nothing's you know set in stone we're gonna do it for a couple of weeks we'll see how it goes see how you guys like it and uh and then we'll just keep uh reevaluating continuously but right now that is what's gonna happen so uh we'll have this episode and then on friday we'll have like a 30-ish minute 40-ish minute thing of the mo money in the top five we'll have bets for friday bets for the weekend all that good stuff there so that yeah. is the announcement yeah, we usually get a lot of good feedback with the top five. Everybody likes the top five. So, yeah, like you said, it's still going to be here. It's going to be on the Mo Money for now. We'll see how it goes, but definitely on the Mo Money, still the graphics every Sunday. And, yeah, the Mo Money, we love the Mo Money. We put a ton of effort into it, uh, like you said. And us splitting it off, we've wanted to do this for a while now. So we glad we get, we're glad we get to do it now, like you said. We'll put it out Friday, so especially when the NFL comes around, you'll get the Saturday picks college football. You'll get the Sunday picks NFL really close to it. It's Friday. You get your betting picks Friday. You get the weekend. You're locked in. Betting picks on a Monday. So maybe it can be over, you know, overwhelming a little bit. Overwhelming. Who knows? Friday, you're in a good mood, positive vibes with the picks. So yeah, um, paychecks uh, come in on Friday too, right? So look, paycheck, bet, yeah. bet responsibly, yeah. bet responsibly, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. If, if there's going to be a day, it's probably going to be Friday. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. All I'm saying. All I'm saying. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but this episode, I'm pumped. Are you pumped? How you How you feeling? Scale uh, one to ten. Ten. Next question. I plead the fifth. Mm, I'm just here so I won't get fined. Yeah. So, um. I, I kind of want you to go first Monday minutes yeah. because I feel like we'll, we'll be on the, the Sox one for a minute, maybe a minute. Yeah. Okay. Monday minute, my Washington nationals. I allegedly, supposedly, you didn't hear this from me. I almost sent a text to um, some of my close friends in a group chat that uh, I said, not only, I, I allegedly almost said not only are the Nationals the worst team in baseball, they're the worst team in the stratosphere. I almost sent that text. I did not. But oh. the Nationals aren't good. I'll admit that. The Nationals suck at baseball. They stink. But COVID is real. John Rahm, he was in a golfing tournament. He was six strokes up. He was in the lead, got hit with COVID. So, honestly, I would rather not be in first place like – 
the Bra- like like a Padres, like a Giants. I wouldn't rather be in pers- first place and then Max Scherzer and Juan Soto get COVID. Seriously, like John Rahm in the golf tournament. So I'm okay with the Nats being in last place because it's COVID. And I won't care when the Nats are, if the Nats are in first place until there are zero COVID cases in the United States. That's just the kind of person I am. So and life is being the bigger man. I'm being the bigger man. I'm being the bigger man here, but Strasburg's hurt. We paid him a lot of money. He's had one win since the world series. I know it's pitchers win. That's a one. He has one win since the world series one. Um, Yeah. So uh, also Starlin Castro is the worst player ever. I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, you put him on a Flint Hill baseball field, high school baseball in the Mac conference. I think he'd bat about 240. I batted 311. So I would be better than Starlin Castro. And Josh Bell is the hottest hitter on the planet. He really is. Like I said, I bumped into him. I gave him some motivation. He is a great, great player now. Chris has nothing to say about it. In every single statistical category, he is better than Bobby K. Dahlback. So I'm that's okay. Not his, that's not his middle name. So. Bobby K, that's his name. So, nope. Josh Bell is hot. The Nats are not. We are terrible. We lost two out of three to a miserable Phillies team. We split with the Braves, which is a miracle. I mean, that's a miracle. We go two and two against the Braves in Atlanta. That's a miracle. That shows how miserable of a franchise the Atlanta Braves are. Scherzer and didn't even pitch, right? Scherzer didn't even pitch. Thank you for pointing I'll that out. I'll give you that out. one. Thank I'm you. A fair guy. Thank you. And Juan Soto blazing hot homers three out of his last five games had a couple hits today he looks locked in at the plate even when i said he was cold i said juan soto's cold last week i talked about it he was batting 280 with a 400 on base that's what juan soto being cold means but now he's locked in so that's fun to watch but the nationals stink and tanner rainey tanner rainey tanner rainey needs to be exiled from the nationals from the mlb wow. from the mexican league from the minor leagues from the independent ball tanner rainey get out right now you're ejected and i can't talk about it anymore fair enough yeah um are you well one question one question prayers up for austin both hit in the face with a fastball mm. broken nose. one question yep are you in the uh mo are you in the are you in the state of mind that I was in last year when I was rooting for the Red Sox to get the number one draft pick? No, because the Nationals can't develop their players. They can't draft correctly. We draft guys like Taylor Jordan, Eric Fetty in the first rounds. We can't draft. So I'm not rooting for a tank. And like I said, we're bad, but the season is not over, Chris. It's 162 games. We're seven games back. We got the Mets memes. We're going to be fine. But right now, we are terrible. Stroman, big win today for the Mets. Big win. He's for, not good. Uh, We've had guy. qualified people saying he is not good either. Mm. I don't know about that. Um, all right. My Monday minute, the Boston Red Sox. Thank goodness we record on Sunday nights. Thank goodness we record on Sunday nights. Because if we recorded on Thursday nights, it would have been a very different mood because the Red Sox went one and three against the Houston Astros. They, there was there were some some close games, late in games and stuff, but that series was not my favorite. Okay. It was not my favorite, but they won the last one, didn't get swept in a four game series. That was fantastic. Who knows what's going on in Houston? Who knows what's going on in Houston I'll anymore? Give you that. Um, especially on the road in Houston. You're not just playing the Astros. You're playing in the, uh, the, the, uh, the cheating zone. That's all I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, thank goodness that, that we just got out of there with a win against this team. But then, then the Red Sox go into New York. And yeah. boy, oh boy, was that my favorite series of my life this season? The Boston Red Sox sweep, sweep, yeah. sweep the New York Yankees. Oh, just wait until they play the Yankees. Oh, yeah. they haven't played anybody. Oh, the New York Yankees, they're going to kill them. The Red Sox haven't played the Yankees. It's going to be terrible. And they sweep them 
in their house. That's me smacking my hand. The Yankees stink. They can't score runs. The Boston Red Sox are the best team in the division. The Tampa Bay Rays, I, I don't even know what to say. But I'm just focused on the Yankees right now. The Red Sox swept the Rays the one time they played them and beat Tyler Glass now, so I'm not too worried. The Yankees stink. The Yankees are memes, okay? They can't score runs. They can't hold the lead. They blew a lead today. Hunter Renfro, 10-game hitting streak. Hunter Renfro, 10-game hitting streak. He's hitting like 480 over those 10 games. J.D. didn't even play the last two games. Nasty Nate. What happened? Nick Pavetta, him? he hurt his wrist. Oh, wash. You, you hope he gets better? I mean, I've had a wrist injury before. Sprained my left wrist all the time. I'm a catcher. I, I fought through it. He's a DH. Hmm. Nasty Nate didn't even pitch. He has a Nick Pavetta. ERA. Nick Pavetta didn't even pitch. Four ERA. And the Red Sox sweep the Yankees. Four and three on the road against the Astros and the Yankees. The Red Sox come away from that road trip with a winning record, and people are still going to try and discredit this team. People said Rafael Devers, he can't hit the fastball anymore. He saw 50 straight fastballs. First game in Yankee Stadium, sends one to Pluto. Is that it? Is, it, is Pluto even a planet anymore? Uh, I give Pluto the benefit of the doubt as for okay. planets. Because we but... did talk about this on the, the top five planets. Yeah. Rafael Devers sends one to Pluto. Okay, on a fastball, he says, get out of here with that hits, a, you know, has a few more hits on the fastball this series. He's back. He's incredible. Marwin Gonzalez is the Yankee killer. Okay, two doubles and a big bomb to tie up the game. And uh, I love this team. Martin Perez threw a gem in Houston. This team is incredible um, and they are good. Confirmed good. They just played two good teams and came away with a winning record on the road. Enough said. I kicked my feet up. I relaxed. I took a deep breath when you started talking because I just felt a sense of relief because you admitted that the Yankees are good. You admitted that you said that. I mean, you're, you're, you're acting like this is such a significant sweep, Chris. If you went in and you swept the Detroit Tigers, would you be acting like this? I don't know. No. But that's what you say the Yankees are, but you just admitted that the Yankees are good. So all my relief, all my anger is gone. You committed there. You said they're good. And uh, I'm very happy. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, they might be slightly above average, you know, maybe they might be slightly above average for now. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, but the Red Sox are great. I mean, they're in another tier. If the How Yankees is Josh are good, Taylor throwing 97 miles an hour? Chris, 96. he's a cheater. He's 96. a cheater. He was throwing 97. Okay, so I there's it. this weird thing. There's this weird thing. When he was pitching in Boston on April 5th, and it was 42 degrees in raining, he wasn't throw. He was throwing like two miles an hour slower. Sue him. What would Chapman He's throwing do? a lot. What would, what would Chapman, Chapman do? do? Well, yeah. I don't, I don't want to talk about that guy. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that guy. What would he do on the baseball field, Chris, in, the, in cold weather? I mean, I don't know probably throw 99 instead of 102 okay. I, I don't uh, know probably a few yeah. miles an hour slower yeah yeah so josh taylor his last 15 games 0.77 era the bullpen's loaded garrett whitlock and <laughs> garrett whitlock and adam Ottavino both pitched in yankee stadium it was beautiful it was beautiful the Sox yeah. swept the yankees if the yankees are good the red Sox are world series contenders baby this team's incredible. You didn't face Garrett Cole. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think he's going to be too effective now that he can't use his sticky stuff. We'll wink, wink. That. As he we'll sent in that text that. message, that cheater. Well, Josh Taylor's throwing 97. I, I've seen him pitch earlier right. this season throwing 93. Sticky 94. stuff doesn't affect your speed. It Chris. affects the spin rate. It doesn't affect your speed. That's I from a, re a reliable source. I know that. I know that. But I listen, listen, Chris. I just, I don't know. Yankees stink. What, they're in fourth place. They're a fourth place team. I shouldn't even be, you're right. I shouldn't even be this excited. That's what I'm saying. They're a fourth place team. The Yankees are six and a half games out of first place. It's June. They've let up more runs than they've scored. Negative run differential. This team, two and eight in their last 10. Aaron Boone didn't even care enough to get kicked out of that oh. game. It wasn't, it, it, it was a pretty that bad was call. Disgusting. It was a pretty bad call. It was call. an awful call. <laughs>
Um, Chris, by the way, I would like to call Marwin Gonzalez Mar lose Gonzalez because mm, even after his heroics in the game, he made an error, even though you said he's going to win a gold glove. His F war is still negative 0.1. But you rave about the guy. You just rave about mediocrity. You rave about below average. It's okay. But so, Mar so Gonzalez, Mar whatever. So Marwin, you're saying is bad. Yeah, he's bad. His past a hundred games, point one F four. He's bad. So theoretically, the Red Sox could could easily get someone better than him, right? Yeah. I don't agree with that, but that's what you think. Yes. So that means the Red Sox could easily be even better. I mean, they're 13 games over 500. You're saying they could be 15, 16. I mean, they could be even better. That right? Christian Arroyo, that was not a double, Chris. That was the yeah, worst was. I've ever seen in my I life. I mean, I, I, I just looked at the stats. Trust the officials about the score books. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to make up some imaginary game that didn't happen. I'm going to look at what happened. I saw a strike three call. I saw a double. And I'm just, Chris, I'm just going with the flow, stop. man. I'm just going. stop it, Chris. That wasn't that wasn't a strike. Well, it was called a strike. Um, I'm not sure about that. One. Gary Sanchez, you intentionally walked Gary Sanchez, Chris. You oh, intentionally talk, walked Gary Sanchez. Can we talk about um, Gittins? Did you what? were you were you watching that first game? What? Well, the the guy the the Yankees called up the rookie. When his parents oh, the said, baseman? they said, they told him, they said, when he got drafted, they said, we're not going to come to a single one of your games until you make it to the majors. Jeez. Wild, wild move. Yeah. Jeez. Wild move. <laughs> he hasn't got a hit that yo had. No, nope. hasn't got a hit yet though. Hasn't <laughs> he hasn't got a hit. Yeah. The Yankees stink no. right now. I agree. Yeah. The Yankees stink. Um, yeah, bad. Ron, uh, Torres, CB, Torres, Torres, Glaber, Glaber. What you think of that heroics off Matty backpacks? I mean, he is a nice closer, double. Chris. Elite. He is. He is. Yeah, you're right. Good call. That's why he blew a save to the fourth place Yankees. Bottom oh, of the order. did he? Yep. Well, I think if I'm just trying to get into Matty backpacks head, um, which I am, I think he just wanted to get a win and he did, he got, he was credited with a win. He said, I'm tired of all this save stuff. I've gotten too many of them. Let me get a win. And he got a win. He did his job. He let Phillips Valdez get the save keep... team guy, team guy. He said, somebody else get the save. You will be fine. We'll win anyways. It's the Yankees. They stick. I, I don't get, obviously I'm not in the major leagues, but Philip Valdez Phillips. Phillips Phillips and I'm only oh, correcting you because Matt Viscursion called him Wilson Valdez yeah 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 come on um Phillips Valdez CB I'm not in the major leagues never even got close but you know he is throwing an 86 mile an hour change up down the middle every single pitch and they couldn't touch that he couldn't throw a fastball for a strike he would throw an 86 mile an hour change up down the heart of the plate and they couldn't touch it they couldn't touch it. Why are there so many righties in that Yankee lineup? The short because they don't have a lefty. You know who they need? Greg Bird. Greg Bird. They need Jay <laughs> Bruce too. They need Jay Bruce. They Guy need like Didi. Dee. They need Derek Dietrich. They need Didi. He's in their triple A. Yeah, they need Didi. That, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. Marwan Gonzalez, three hundred forty-seven foot home run. By the way, um, wouldn't have been out at a lot of parks. Gio but it Urshela. was Gio Urshela hit a ball down the right field line that would have been out at Fenway too. Were they oh. were they at Fenway? No, they weren't. But mm. Yankees could have been two and one in my book. I'm Ooh. just going off what I saw. Odor, I'm, just, I'm just going off what I saw. Odor would have Strike hit a three. walk off. It's it's just man. It's just can't walk. Can't you can't let that go by. Come on. This guy, we we gotta we gotta pop this guy's balloon. We gotta burst his bubble. We gotta... Balloon, you 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 know that reference. I can't, I can't. The balloons. Nightmare. This is a the nightmare. Your balloons is a nightmare. If only E Noon was. Should I, should I call E Noon right now? Yeah. No, 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 no. Who's hot? Who's not? Who's hot? Who's not? I'm already ringing. It's already ringing. It would be rude at this point. If he doesn't pick up, if he picks up, I don't know, man.
man. I can't believe just what's Why is my audio on? not coming up? I can't believe it, man. All right. You got lucky. I'm in my basement. I don't have cell Ooh. reception. So whatever you're doing with the sound control waves, keep doing it. Whatever. You Ooh. weirdo. What are you doing? Uh, who's hot? Who's not? Shall we? Who's hot? Who's not? Yeah. Socks are good. Um, who's hot? Jesse Winker. Yeah. Jesse Winker of our Cincinnati Reds, our collective Cincinnati Reds of last year, 2020. There's still, I, I still got a little part of my heart for them. Of course, you Same know, here. Um, always remember your first love. Always, always the Cincinnati Reds, man. Mm. Jesse Winker today, three bombs. This is not an episode from two, two weeks ago. This is today. This is today, right now. It's June seventh because he did the same thing about two weeks ago. He it's his second three homer game of the season. Okay, Jesse Winker, seventeen bombs on the season now, joining that group with Acuna, Vladdy, Tatis, all all the uh, all the stud young guys. His last 14 games, he's hitting 379, nine bombs. Mm. Let me repeat, 14 games, nine bombs, 14 RBI for Jesse Winker on the season. He's hitting 350 with a 1077 OPS. Put some respect on Jesse Winker's name. He's a stud. He is a stud. Shout out to Jesse Winker. He is on fire. Jesse Winker, he's the man. He is elite, CB. He's elite. He's elite. We know that elite. NL MVP candidate. Put it on a Currently. t-shirt. What? Winker Jesse elite? Winker's elite. We got to come up with a nickname for Winker. We'll think about it. Yeah. Brainstorm. <laughs> I don't know. The wink. No. It'll come. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's I Monday know. at, at 1 22 AM. It's the best time to come up with a nickname. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Where's he from? Where's Jesse Winker from? I don't Jesse know. Jesse Winker, birthplace. You have a guess? Ooh, guess what state? Iowa. Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, New York. Future Yankee. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Um, future right. Yankee Jesse Winker. That's his nickname. Yeah. Um, future Yankee Jesse Winker. I like it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for the positive vibes. They need um, it. But something I do know, CB. We don't know about his nickname, but something I do know, Cedric Mullins is good at baseball. We like this guy. I accused you of hating on Cedric Mullins. I couldn't yeah. find the receipts. What I know. I, I couldn't find the receipts. I, You just nightmares, nightmares, bad thoughts, bad vibes from all your slander. I just, I can't do it. Right when I saw DJ LeMay, you ground out to second base, I left my phone next to the TV and I just made some food. He had yeah. a pretty good catch though, DJ. And, yeah. Uh, it was a double. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Not an error. Yeah. Um, but Cedric Mullins, he is certified good. He has an 890 OPS batting 314, eight bombs, starting center fielder his first year where he is the solidified starting center fielder for the O's. He is nine for his last nine. He was three for his last three with the diving catch last game. We like this guy. But he is a truly outstanding center fielder. Chris, the Orioles stink. They swept you to open the season. We all know that. But we all know that the Orioles are terrible. But I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Will yep. three Orioles be all-stars this season? Trey, John, yeah. Cedric? Yeah. yeah I think we have to. Maybe. I mean, uh, I, John Means got rocked and then got put on the IL. So hopefully yeah. he's all right. But yeah. I mean, he's ER, he got rocked and his ERA is still in the twos. So yeah. I'm 99% sure. But yeah, yeah I, 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 I mean, those those are three guys that deserve it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, I hope so. I think that Mullins might get snubbed because AL outfielders just going to be absolutely stacked. But I think go. three, three, no, cut that. I think that three <laughs> Orioles will be all-star or should be all-stars at least obviously i think mancini and means are locks but yeah. yeah cedric mullins he is hot it's fun to watch he's a good player so rowdy telez rowdy mm -hmm. telez is locked in my brain as the red sox killer for the toronto blue jays but there may be a new guy in town it's cedric mullins because this year 10 games against the red sox for mullins 10 games 
He's hitting 439 with a 500 on base percentage. And he's got two stolen bases in 10 games, one home run, 707 slugging for a 1207 OPS. He kills the Sox this year. He just kills mm-hmm. them. I remember when he came up because obviously I'm getting a ton of games against the Orioles that I'm watching because of the Red Sox. And I remember when he came up, it was like his first series. They were talking about him, the high praise, high praise from everyone at the beginning when he came up. So it's nice to see he's, uh, he's balling, just hopefully not against the Sox. Um, my who's hopefully not. Hopefully not, yeah. Yeah, hopefully not. Thank you. My who's not. Look, I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but, you know, we cover our teams. We, we like to cover the, the whole rest of the league, of course. This is something that needs to be talked about. Okay. This is not bias. The Yankees offense is not hot. It stinks. Mm. It stinks so bad. They don't have a lefty presence at all in the lineup. No lefty presence coming into today or coming into Sunday. They were 26th out of 30 teams for total run scored. And it's not like they've played 10 less games. They've played like the average amount of games. 26th for hitting as a team hitting 227 as a team this yankee team they're averaging 3.72 runs per game that's after tonight's game it's just not what you see i mean we said at the beginning of the year everybody said at the beginning of the year they're gonna hit we know can the pitching hold up obviously the pitching's been fine to this point been the offense, phenomenal they can't way score. better than the socks they can't score eh, maybe not but they can't score at all what's going on they don't have a lefty because you're basically our resident Yankee scout input man. Uh, what are we doing? How do we fix this? Well, not that not that it should be fixed, but you know, Nuke Voigt needs to come back. They need to give Frazier. They're giving him a pretty good opportunity this year, but they messed him up like you guys did with Blake Swihart. <laughs> um, so we need to get Frazier every single day at bats. We need a lefty, Mike Taunchman. We had him. We let them him off. The Giants. Who would you get for him? The guy that pitched today, right? Wandy Peralta. Yeah. Yeah, he pitched today. Great. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's not good, man. They need a lefty presence. I would call up Derek Dietrich. Why not? He's gonna bat probably 190, but he'll give you some swag. He'll hit some homers. He can play second, third, first, maybe a little outfield. But yeah, they're in trouble, man. They're in trouble. How do you do that in that stadium too? You've even admitted it's a clown yeah. stadium. It's a I little never league said it's stadium. A clown sa- I said it's a little league stadium, not a clown stadium. Fenway is it's falling apart. Fenway's beautiful. I'll be at Fenway. Um, June 29th. I will be at Fenway park for guess who they're playing. Who? Kansas city Royals. Let's go. Let me see Benny. And coincidentally, this is so it's a whole thing. We're going up to Maine to my grandma's house, um, but it's the timing worked out. And we just picked this day, this game, because they were going to be at, at Fenway. And on, I, I, I did not know anything about this when we picked the day, but you'll never guess what the promo is that day. What? Rafi Devers bobblehead night. I, I wonder how large they're gonna make his body. He's fat. That's he's I've not, said it on here before. He's, he's not. Fat. He he's beautiful. He is beautiful. Um, best third baseman in baseball. Who's uh your who's not? My who's not is Tom Brady, Chris. I can't take this clown anymore. I can't take this guy. First off, he's 44. We've talked about his doctor, his best friend Guerrero. He he's not a doctor. He claims to be a doctor. He's gotten some lawsuits against him. He's a clown. Tom Brady. 50 years old, Chris. He's hanging out with Dixie D'Amelio. Is she even legal? Is she even legal, Chris? How old is she? She's like 19 or something. I don't know. She's a this guy is a clown. Why is he 50 and hanging out with a TikTok star? By the way, 19. She's 19. 19. But he's hanging with the all right. He's hanging with the parents. That's all. I I don't know. That's my guess. He's not hanging with the kids. He's 43. 20% 20% of 30 to 49 year olds you t- use TikTok. 20%. This guy is a clown. He's that guy that tries to fit in way too hard. He's that guy. He's on the trends. He's trying to be trendy, trying to be like, yo, you listen to that album, man. Trying to be too cool. That He's new logic. Overfit in that new logic. If he likes logic, uh, I'll reassess <laughs> this. 
but he's a clown. He is an absolute clown. I can't take him anymore. 20% of 30 to 49 year olds use TikTok. 20%. He tries fake clown himself on TikTok. By the way, that, that was tweet, funny. Remember that tweet? Remember that tweet? He was like, just had a little avocado te- te- tequila, right? Yeah. He knew he mistyped that. He could have easily went and corrected it, but he sent the tweet off. He said, how can I go viral here? How can I get more money to Alex Guerrero to give me my special stuff? This guy's a clown. <laughs> Listen, Tom Brady was in the back of a TikTok. He didn't even, he didn't even do a little dance. He just walked by in a TikTok. Someone filmed him. It's not even his fault. If anything, I, I don't know. I don't know. Why, why are people filming Tom Brady? He's just trying to walk by. Why are the Patriots filming practices? I don't know, but people are talking about it again. It's out. It's out and about again. Spygate that was a good one. Is out and about. Not sure. Not sure about that. Uh, he's not even on the Patriots anymore. So I guess you hate the Bucs because that's his team. No, sadly. Uh, that took a sad turn he left for me. Guys for the- so the so next up is uh, shout out of the week. Shout out of the week. Uh, what do you got here? Because I see it on the sheet. I don't. Yeah. I'm gonna contest this one. I'm gonna dispute this. Yeah. So I'm doing something different with shout of the week. Obviously, shout of the week. You get we give our shout outs. It's not for. It, it can be players. It can be we've done food. We've done different things. I'm doing something I've never done before. I'm giving a shout out of the week to cicadas because I am accepting defeat. Shout out cicadas. You've taken over. And I'm accepting defeat. I'm waving the white flag. I don't have a flag. Here's a piece of paper. I'm waving the white piece of paper because these cicadas are disgusting, Chris Blake. I went to your house. I was in shock over how many cicadas were there. I told you and Danny Waladachuk. Shout out Danny Waladachuk. Shout out Danny. I was like, I have zero cicadas at my house. Remember I said that? I Mm -hmm. sent you a little video. No cicadas. Then there was one, then there was two, then there was five, then there was 10. There's probably about 50 cicadas here now. It's not as bad as your house where there's a zillion. It's crazy, but Taking over. 50 is 50 too many. 50 is 50 too many. And have you ever like, I've like swatted a cicada. They make oh, that buddy. noise and it's like, Nyeh. you know what I mean? Hugh, sorry, my, my headphones got out. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's like it's like oh yeah 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 like yeah, yeah. A video totally game know. like totally you're shooting them like about. a monster with like a laser and it makes that noise yeah they're they're disgusting they say and you Chris, hear them yeah uh, what were you saying you hear them you what? hear them in the distance yeah and it's just an oh it's just a a constant just yeah just far away and it's i'm true I'm trying to, I'm a clean guy. I keep my, I keep my room clean, my apartment Respect. clean at JMU. Thank you. Thank you. I work hard being a clean. I take pride in it. I want to wash my car. I want to wash my car. I keep the inside clean. It's pretty spotless. Um, I want to wash the outside of my car. White car, it gets dirty. But every time I think about going and getting it washed, a cicada splatters on the windshield. Mm. And I'm like, I'm going to get it washed oh. and then I'm going to get 10 cicadas that splatter on it. They they stink, like actually. Have you smelled it? No, really? So there's so many by me that there's a bunch of dead ones on the sidewalk, right? Yeah. They just die. Mm-hmm. And they smell horrible, like so bad. It, it was described, someone else described it as wet dog. I mean, that's wow. what it's, it, it, they smell terrible. So I'm, I'm watering my neighbor's flowers, right? beautiful flowers they got over there thank you and i spray you know i'm spraying the bush i got the hose i'm spraying the bush and everything and little did i know silly me there's a bunch of cicadas in there so i spray it and they all fly out and they're flying into me they're just flying into me like crazy um it's disgusting they're terrible and one more subtle flex Uh, i was doing my devers miles and it was like 90 degrees over Mm -hmm. the weekend you know so I, you know, I took my shirt off to run. I was running outside without my shirt because it was 90 degrees, 90, it was 95 today. So I was like, all right, this, it's a mile. This, this is what I got to do, you know? And like three of them flew into me, no shirt on. They just flew straight into my body. Disgusting. Mm. 
And another shout out to them. We're saying a lot of bad things about them. I'll give them another compliment. Um, have you ever tried to organize an event with like a lot of people? Yeah. You know, like, once or twice. Not during like, COVID. Obviously. Of course not. Of course not. Of course. But like I've been playing basketball with a group of guys. There's like probably 15 to 20 guys in the group chat to get. 10 guys or eight guys at one basketball court at one single time, 20 year old guys during the summer is probably the hardest thing on planet earth to do. Probably the hardest thing on planet earth to do to find a solidified time. Shout out cicadas. Once every 17 years, they all show up at the function. They all show up. They all show out. They all put in a hundred percent effort. It's honestly pretty impressive. It's crazy, especially because I think they live for like a week and then yep. they die. Yeah. I mean, that's incredible. How do they, how do they communicate this? Yeah. How do they how, know? I don't understand. Well, ha we've had uh, Dr. Dr. Muck on shout out yeah. Dr. Muck. We need a scientist to tell us how this works because I just don't understand how it all happens at once. I, I read, I was listening to some, I was watching some video today and they were asking like a bug specialist about it. And he was like, look, I wish I could tell you more but we don't really know how to research them because they're here every 17 years and they're here for like a month or two. It's hard to research, but he says that they know like the temperature, they know the exact moment to come out every 17 years when they know it's like peak temperature. It's impressive, man, but they're gross. They're, they're gross. gross. Get out of here. Get out of here. Uh, my shout out. This is, this is a bug podcast. No bug mm. podcast. Yeah. Uh, my shout out of the week division races okay i was thinking about it today and there's i mean let's just real quick let's go through the divisions american league east there's four teams that can win it there's four okay is that fair stop stop me when i tell a lie three american league no no yankees probably i guess rays no. Sox, jays rays uh rays jays yankees Hmm. interesting interesting uh american league central i'd say there's two teams the twins they stink they're terrible yeah. um i mean the royals could win it but like in reality i think it's it's two teams at this point um the al west i think it's two teams the mariners maybe the angels maybe but really it's it's two teams you know national league east honestly anyone could win that Anyone could win that. I think the Marlins are the least likely. Nats pretty close, unbiased. Yeah. But any team could honestly, realistically win that. NL Central, four teams could win that. NL West, three teams could win that. I mean, it's we're 60 games in. This was it last season. We're 60 games in. I'm not saying it's it's toward the end of the year, but we're we're over a third of the way through. And there's division races everywhere. I love it. And if, if I, I think honestly, in my opinion, AL East, the NL West are the most interesting right now, but it's, it's awesome to me. Um, I think there's probably seven or eight teams that are like out, out of it. And we pretty much knew that at the beginning of the year, that means there's 23 teams right now competing for 10 playoff spots. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome, man. And like we talked about a couple episodes ago, the giants are they still in first place yep two games up unreal how awesome unreal. is that giants i mean i i don't know because we were both pretty down on them going into the year i wish i could adopt them but i i don't think it's right because i was down on them but i wish i could adopt them because they seem fun with the pitching the vets buster posey hitting 333 yeah um evan longoria just got hurt hope he's doing all right but yeah four to six weeks he's out but yeah, they're a fun team. They're a fun team. And Yaz hasn't even played to the level that we know he can play at. So our brew crew, nine and one, their last 10, they're tied for first right now with, uh, with the Cubs. And then the fraud Cardinals are two and a half games back. Ugh, they stink. shouldn't have let John Brebbia go. That's your fault. Yeah, that's your exactly fault. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Good call. Good call. Um, a shout out of the week that we could do every single week is Jacob to Grom, Chris. Every single week we could talk about Jacob DeGrom, but I feel like this is the time. We, we really got to dive into this. 0.62 ERA. 
and he has more F war. His F war is 3.2. That F war, shout out Devin Fink. This was his tweet. That F war is more than the F war for the entire pitching staffs of the Indians, Cardinals, Braves, Nationals, Rangers, Diamondbacks, Orioles, Twins, Mariners, Blue Jays, Pirates, Cubs. That is three, six, nine, 12 teams that Jacob DeGrom is more valuable than. More, he is more valuable on his own than 12 teams' entire staff. That's how good this guy is, Chris. And we, we got to appreciate the greatness that we're witnessing right now. Could you imagine if this was last year, 60 game season, the season's over. He finishes with a 0.62. He's if the season ended right now, is he getting your MVP vote or is it Tatis or Acuna? I was going to say, I was going to see when I could slide this in, but since you asked, you know, I'm not a pitcher for MVP guy, but Jacob deGrom is the MVP. No He's doubt. The MVP. About it. He's also, this doesn't matter. It's just fun. It's funny. Uh, what's he hitting? What's he hitting? He was batting around 400, but I think he went 0 for 3 yesterday. Stinks. Yeah. He's a fraud. Um, I'm trying to find it right now. What do you but, mean it doesn't uh, matter, Chris? I mean, it doesn't really matter. He's getting he's getting two at-bats every five days. It doesn't really matter. I I've, I might have said this stat on the podcast here before, but he was a shortstop in college. Went Convert him to a pitcher late. You know, he has one. We've talked about this. He has one career college home run. You know who it's off, right? No. Chris Sale. Oh, God. And college. Chris Sale. Yeah. Chris Sale went to uh, – I'm not trying to fake like I know it. I just know it was a really – yeah, Florida Gulf Coast University. Like, he didn't go to – like, uh, I was just surprised when I heard that. Like, he didn't go to, like, uh, you know, uh, Mississippi State or something or – yeah vandy or something like that uh and he's a stud so i just thought that was cool jacob de grom hitting 391 with an 826 ops yeah 826 ops Better ops and kk hernandez who's won mm -hmm. for his last 20 and josh six. bell oh, who's seven. your cleanup hitter uh this is from jared carabas we're citing all these people shout out jared uh, this is this is his tweet today about jacob de grom starting pitchers have registered at 100 miles an hour or faster 127 times this year so starting pitchers 100 or faster 127 times jacob de grom is responsible for guess what percentage just guess 80 percent 74 percent yeah he has 94 fastballs of 100 or higher miles an hour the next closest you have a guess on this one who it is Oh, uh, give me a second. I want to get this next closest. I have, I have one hint if you want it. Yeah. What is it? It's late. Could very much win the uh, AL MVP. Yeah. I was going to say right Otani. Now. I was going to say it. Yeah. So, so DeGrom has 74 or 94, right? Mm -hmm. Otani is the next closest with eight. Yeah. Eight. Listen. With that velo, CB, we've talked about it. It's sus, man. How how's he th how's he thirty three throwing seven miles an hour faster than when he was a rookie? It doesn't make any sense. His mechanics, please. I don't know. What are they giving him? I don't know. I, but I, I'm not saying anything shady's going on. You are. How's so... Josh Taylor throwing ninety seven, Chris? He's fine. Um, but Jacob Degrom is incredible. Are we? I think of him in a separate era. I, I think of the Kershaw, Verlander, Scherzer era. I know they're still playing. Verlander's hurt. But DeGrom is the next era, right? We're not grouping him in with those guys. Sure, yeah. Are, I mean, would you? No, he, he really hit his stride like 2016. So, yeah. No, yeah. passing the baton. He hit yeah. his stride 2015. So, yeah. I mean, he's been lights out his whole career, but yeah. solidified himself 2015. I'm just thinking, I mean, he's the greatest pitcher of his generation, but we're going to have to talk about it if we include those other guys, of course. But uh, if, if we're not, then it's no doubt. And I don't know who's going to challenge him for that, you know, ever. Um, but, but we shall see. Uh, so Jacob deGrom's dominating. You said something about his velo. 
That was you, not me. But MLB said they uh, they are moving forward with plans to enforce the sticky stuff, aka the pine tar, the the boiled Coca Cola on a frying pan mixed with bug spray, mixed with who knows, who knows. Yeah. But they said they're going to crack down on it uh, with a June rollout pending from ESPN. June rollout pending, and basically the thing I've heard is. They're just going to randomly check pitchers when you're yeah. walking off the mound in between innings, the ump's going to walk up to you. What's he going to pat you down? Yeah. Are they going to check the common, the hat, the glove, the belt? Yeah. Like, how's that going to work? They're just going to like feel around like, Whoa, what's going on? Yeah, it's weird, man. I, I think that's the only thing they can do to combat it. I don't know what else they can do other than checking the pitcher um before after they're leaving the mound but something has to be done you see all the reports 80 to 90 percent of pitchers do it you saw the cardinals manager literally admit it it's baseball's Mm -hmm. quote dirty little secret um and then they use the excuse of well the pitcher gets a better grip and you want that so batters don't get hit listen I, I really think that the same amount of batters would get hit if pine tar wasn't used. Obviously, it can give you a little more grip, but you got a rosin. You can obviously wipe your hand. Sure, the grip isn't going to be as good, but we've seen the stats. The RPM is out of control. Hitters with an RPM or fastballs with an RPM over 2,500, their batting average is significantly less than an RPM, less than 2,500. Um, I think that it's something that needs to be done. I'm glad they're doing it, but it's a good point. Like you said, I don't know how they're on for how they'll really, uh, enforce it. Other than that, I know Pedro Martinez, he's another Boston cheater. He said he put his hands through his hair. What's Joe West going to be touching dudes hair. I I don't know. (laughs) Shout out Pedro. Love you, Pedro. You are, uh, you're fine. Uh, You're incredible. So, I just look, I'm not trying to overreact and it's not. My first thought was steroids. I thought about steroids. It's not going to be like that. There's not going to be a congressional hearing. There's not going to be any of that, but this is, am I crazy for thinking this is a huge monumental step? That's just crept up on us because like you said, two years ago, that's all, no one cared at all. It was, I don't care if they're using it because I'm not going to get hit in the neck with 98 from, Mm -hmm. from a Roldis Chapman. Okay. I'm fine with that. He wants to get a better grip. Perfect. And all of a sudden it's been so quick. It's been so quick. This change to it just being a completely video game type of thing that people are throwing video game, you know, curveballs and stuff like that. And it's so quick. It's so insane. And I wonder, I'm so curious and we'll never know, but I'm so curious how much it has changed anyone's career. Anyway, Trevor Bauer, if he never uses it, is he signing an $120 million contract? You know, what's his ERA? I'm not, look, it it was a semi troll tweet. It was a great tweet. Again, shout out Jared. That's where I got this from Jared Krabbis, but Garrett Cole hadn't allowed more than two earned runs. Then MLB says they're going to announce, they're going to enforce the sticky stuff rule more. And then his next start, he allows five earned runs. I'm just saying, what if he, what if he was never allowed to use it? Who knows? Who knows? I don't know, CB. It, it, It is something that needs to be done though. The ERA and pitcher stats are hitting all-time highs, batting average all-time low, hits all-time low. Something that needs to be done. We talked about things that need to be done, bring the juice balls back. Uh, we talked about that two episodes ago, all the things we wanted to see change. But, yeah, it's a big, big, big deal. And if pitchers really stop doing it, we could really see guys like Trevor Bowers numbers take a hit because – DeGrom's throwing 101. A lot of pitchers throwing 97, 98. They're dominating. Bauer throws 93 to 95. Obviously, that's nothing to scoff at, but with your RPM not as high, 93 to 95 to hitters is a lot better than 98 to 100. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I just think, depending on how it's enforced, if if it is truly enforced, 
like they say it's going to be like it's written up in the rules I, it's going to be a storm like something big is going to happen there's going to be a big monumental there's going to be a guy that gets pointed out look at his stats before and after it's just something big's going to happen that's what i feel like is coming. Yeah. something big something yeah. huge I, I um, if they agree. enforce it if they enforce yeah. it so um julio jones moving on to football take it away titan 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 titans 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 titan the front door up titans the frick up titans baby we are taking over the world we're not going to do nfl predictions i predicted the super bowl correctly last year chiefs first buccaneers i did it way 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 before the season began I said the I said the Chiefs would win, whatever. But I predicted Chiefs first Buccaneers sneak peek. I might have to pick the Titans. I'm not saying I'm doing it, but I might have to. Chris Blake, close your eyes, okay? Close your eyes with me for a second. Are yours closed? My my eyes are closed. Mine are closed. I don't know if you're telling the truth. My eyes are closed. The YouTube people right. know. Watch back the YouTube video. Shout out the YouTube video. Shout out the YouTube people. Just imagine this. You have a young and budding wide receiver, a thousand yard wide receiver superstar, and a guy named AJ Brown. Thank you, Harry. Oh, okay. You got another guy. A quarterback who came from another team with a lot of potential, who is finally hitting his stride, 33 touchdowns, like seven interceptions. A guy by the name of Ryan Tannehill. Kirk Cousins. Oh, all right. Sorry. Then you got a guy who led the league in rushing two seasons in a row. He is a monster by the name of Derrick Henry. Think about all the things you could do with those offenses. And then you got one of the best wide receivers in the 21st century. Julio Showtime Jones, Waffle House, because he's always open. You have Julio Jones, AJ Brown. Okay, eyes open, eyes open. We're oh, back. God. Okay. Yep. Cool. You have Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry, AJ Brown, Julio Jones on that offense. They're scoring 50 points a game, Chris Blake. And this is the right move. Second and a fifth round pick, I believe. Second and fourth. Second and a fourth, unbelievable pull. Unbelievable. This offense must watch TV. I can't wait to watch the football team at one. Tennessee at four. It's going to be Patriots at eight, baby. Patriots at eight. I think they have like one primetime game. Ridiculous. Um, I can't complain. I can't complain. Um, You basically covered the, the titans um i want to talk about the falcons in a sec but i will not slander julio jones he is one of the greatest receivers of all time julio jones is the greatest one of one of the greatest receivers of all time and one of the most entertaining receivers of all time he's huge he's he's fast he can jump over you he can moss you he can run you over i mean he's incredible he is 32 the age the injuries always a concern but yeah. i don't want the titans to do incredible because i root for the patriots and they're in the same you know they're both in the afc and you love the titans so that makes me you know root against them a little bit just yeah. just a little just a little um but i'm not going to slander julio because he's awesome he's incredible I will slander the Atlanta Falcons because Mm -hmm. you have traded one of the best players in your franchise's history for a second and a fourth round pick. And you also sent a sixth over to the Titans, but who cares? Look, say what you will about the Patriots. Tom Brady left in free agency. Say what you will about whatever, so-and-so, so-and-so. The Falcons traded Julio Jones by choice i know he wanted out but you know why he wanted out because your franchise is stupid decisions yeah julio jones you traded one of the best if not the best player in your entire franchise's history sad sad slander the falcons atlanta sports i've said i said this you know what i said this when we were in philly atlanta sports are very they can be very cool except for i feel like the falcons are not very cool but they're less cool now. 
Uh, the Braves are pretty cool with Acuna. The Hawks are pretty cool with Trey Young, your no. boy. Uh, and the Falcons just got significantly less cool. They're far back in the in the uh, the race for Atlanta's coolest team now because they lost Julio Jones, who's incredibly cool and incredibly good at football, and they just traded him away. From 2014 to 2019, he was a pro bowler every single year, 1,564 yards on average, on average from 2014 to 2019. Everybody points out injuries. You just said it. Since 2013, other than 2020, since 2013. Why we count 2020 now? Because 2020 was a fluke year. He missed seven games. He had a messed up uh hamstring i believe he had a hand so he, he was hurt he was hurt yeah yeah he was he, he was hurt last season we're not counting 2020 from 2014 <laughs> to 2019 we're not counting it he missed four games he missed four games in six seasons julio jones is a dominating player brian Tanhill, you give a fake handoff to derrick henry you do a play action to derrick henry then you got julio jones streaking down the field you don't want julio jones you got aj brown this offense is going to be unbelievable. Ryan Tannehill, I'll do another quarterback ranking list. You'll see. I think I ranked him seven last year. I think it's going to be higher than that. Um, this guy's unbelievable. This offense is unbelievable. 17 game series. Derrick Henry, over 2,000 rushing yards is a lock. Julio, baby. It's Julio time. Waffle House. Can't wait to root for my Titans this year. I can see it now. I can see it now. Sunday night football. Bills, Titans, week six. I think it's Monday night football. Ryan Tannehill drops back. Fourth quarter, Ryan Tannehill drops back. Fake handoff to Derrick Henry, like you just said. Scans the field. Pump fakes to A.J. Brown. Throws to Julio Jones. Touchdown, seven points. And the Titans are only down by 14 to the Buffalo Bills in the fourth quarter. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be 35 to 49 because they don't have a defense. Man, you're scared, Chris. It's pathetic. It's sad. It's sad. They, they don't have a defense. What are they going to do? Um, Julio's very cool, though. He's the man. He's the man. Tighten up, baby. I'm going to remember all the haters of the Titans now. So uh, when we're deep into the playoffs. So you're a Titans fan? Second favorite team. I split my time. Football okay. team and Titans. Yeah, so I they're just wanted, Titans are my check. favorite team. T Titans are my favorite team with a name. Mm, okay. Fair. Fair. Uh, JMU softball. What's going on? Give Dude, me a little update, please. First team ever to be unranked and win their first two games. Uh, the pitcher has been unbelievable. First off, Chris Blake. How can a softball pitcher throw 115 pitches, come back and play the next game? That's what I don't they've know. been doing. I don't know. Can I get real quick statement? Yeah. I wanted Mizzou to beat JMU, obviously. Yeah, That's JMU. my team. I mean, Mizzou stinks. They're out. Well, they were really good. I wanted Mizzou to beat JMU, but now that Mizzou's out, I'm fully in on JMU because I have oh. some ties. I'm not rooting against you guys because you beat us. I have some ties. Obviously, my sister just graduated from there. Um, shout out, Maddie. But – I'm rooting for JMU. I'm fully on board. Uh, I just want that out there. Okay. Odyssey Alexander, unbelievable. She's been pitching her heart out. She's been fully into it. I saw that JMU was five and a half run underdogs. They lost in the last inning uh, by three runs, but they play Oklahoma again tomorrow at four o'clock. I raced home today and the game got moved to tomorrow to four o'clock. So I think uh, it's going to be Odyssey again, but she made that incredible play. Um, softball, it's a very tiny field. And I'll admit, I haven't really watched college softball, women's softball, but it's fun, man. They bring a lot of energy. Odyssey Alexander's unbelievable. JMU putting us on the map, man. JMU softball's gotten like 15,000 followers. Because um, you have the big schools. You got Florida State, Alabama, UCLA, Oklahoma, Mizzou. Oklahoma State. Mizzou wasn't in the tournament. And then you have JMU. Putting us on the map, baby. Putting us on the map. I've loved watching them. Um, you watch the Nats lose and then JMU win usually. So big game tomorrow. You guys are listening to the MoCast while you're watching the game tomorrow. Four o'clock. 
must win must win if we win we're going to the champ championship the championship championship they're in the semifinals if yep. they lose are they out if they lose they're out Jeez. all right and oklahoma is one right oklahoma's the one seed yep they're, First they're supposedly one of the best Jeez. teams ever constructed Jeez. Jeez. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I, you know, I almost said, all right, let's do top five mo money right now. I almost yeah. did it, but, uh, Thursday, Thursday, uh, we'll do that. So Friday it'll be out. Um, but we will be with Ethan noon for that. Of course. Uh, that's all I have. I can't think of anything else, any minor notes. Yeah, man. I hope you guys enjoy the mo money on its own separate thing now. Um, Love to see it, man, especially heading into NFL. It's going to be huge, going to be huge. It's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, all right, episode 62 in the books, in the books. Shout out, Sox, best team in baseball. No, uh, stop. <laughs> Peace.